Okay, good morning. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> and I understand that this is the first Sunday of the year. So, Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> Can I just go back a slide for this? Um, okay. I'll try to use this, but I'm not sure whether it, Yeah, I got it right sometimes. Um, I know... It's, it's a bit of pressure actually when it when it's the first week or rather first Sunday of the year. Uh, <laughs> somehow I, I get the impression that am I supposed to have a very important message for <laughs> for the church? <laughs> okay, uh, whether it is or not, uh, let's let's rely on the Lord. Okay, shall we start with a word of prayer? Father, we thank you that we are gathered, gathered here today, and I pray that Lord, uh, whatever I will deliver today, if it comes from you. Lord, let it be, let it stay in our hearts and let it grow, let the seeds grow and, and mature and do fruits and may, may we bring you glory. And if it, if it doesn't come from you, whatever points that come from myself, Lord, let, let those things be forgotten on the minds of those listeners, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's, I like this slide because it's, it sort of shows that we were in 2023, but transition into 2024. Um, some, some, I also understand that some people say it's not a good year. <laughs> uh, I don't know where they come from. I think it's uh, those, those who believe in numbers. 2-4 to, to Chinese sounds like something not very nice. <laughs> I, think, I think there's a bondage. I hope that we're not in, in, that, in that, right? Uh, if, if everything sounds like something and, it, and it's bad, then, it's, then the world is really, really a terrible place. If it just sounds like it. So my, my message today has to do with time as well. I call this um, a moment in time. And I hope it's a timely message. Yeah? <laughs> now time is made up of uh, three parts. The past, the future, and of course the present. Um, some of us, if, if you look at the slides here, the, the slider, to the, to the left is red, means the past, and to the, to the right is future, and, the, and it means, and it's green, it means future. Some of us are at a stage where we are very early in our life, we're still very young, we have very little past, and a lot of future to look towards too. And some of us are in the, in the other extreme, where we have lived a lot of past, so we have a past with us, and we hope there will be more future as well, yeah? <laughs> So anyway, these things in the general, that's like in the middle, that's like to and fro, that is the present. And that present really, if you think about it, it's really just a, just a very, very tiny piece, hair-like kind of thing. Uh, what I show on the, on the slide here is actually very big already. The statement I just said just now is already passed, <laughs> right? Whatever we did this morning, the Lord's Supper, uh, the giving is already passed. So the present is really just a split second. And let's talk about this. Let's do one by one. Yeah? Let me begin with the past. Now, okay, maybe not the past, but the overall picture. <laughs> what, what does the Word of God say? In Revelation, we, we, we see that um, when, the, when the message was delivered to the seven churches, the, the first line came with uh, grace and peace to you from him. And him here refers to God, right? God who is and who was and who is to come. Now that talks about a God who is everlasting to everlasting. He has no time. As in, timeless. Further down in verse 8, this is God speaking. He said the same thing again. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, begin, meaning the beginning and the end. Who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. So God here made a statement that He is actually timeless. From beginning, He was there. To the end, He will still be there. In the Gospel of John, when, when the Pharisees were challenging Jesus and they were laughing at Jesus about how you, knew, how you could have known Abraham, uh, who was you know, long, long ago, and you are not even 50 years old. And this is what Jesus replied to them. He said, Verily, verily, very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. Now, this speaks of two things. 
Number one, it speaks of him uh, being around even before Abraham. And number two, it also speaks of him being God because the word I am here he used is, is pretty much like how God revealed to Moses that I am who I am. In Second Peter, Peter said that with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. So this is what uh, time is to God. We may live 70, 80 years, but to God it's just a split second. In Psalm 90, and this is a psalm, this is rather a, a prayer of Moses. This is what Moses said. He was, he was praying to God. He was talking to God. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. A thousand years in your sight are like a day and has gone by or like a watch in the night. Now, allow me to turn to um, Psalm 90, uh, continue on in a later verse, I think it's verse 8 or 9. Moses said, our days may come to 70 years or 80. Some of us have lived longer than that. If our strength endures, that is. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow. This is how Moses put it, huh? For they quickly pass and we fly away. It may be 70 years, 80 years, or even longer, but it quickly pass and we fly away. And that is time. And that to us is a big deal. Uh, of course, to God it's a big deal as well. But in, in, terms of, in terms of time, in terms of how fast it passed, to God it's just, just like that. Now let us go, to, go through what time is to us. Let's, let's, look at, let's look at the past. Begin with the past, yeah? Sometimes we think of the past as something that is already over and let's not talk about it. Yeah? Sometimes we, we, think, we, we, we think of things like that, right? But actually, if you think carefully, you can't not consider the past. Especially for us who are at my age or older. Most of us are around my age or older here. <laughs> uh, we carry a lot of past with us, right? And that's, where, that's what put us into perspective. We are where we are now or who we are now because of our past. So if you don't regard your past at all, if you totally dis disregard your past, who are you? <laughs> the past affects us a lot, a lot. Now let me go through a, a three areas. Number one, the past affects us physically. And that is very true. As you, as you hear, we are what we eat. Right? Or rather, we are what we ate. Whatever I ate before, this is who I am now. I wish I could be slimmer, <laughs> but we are what we eat. And of course, we are what we do as well, or what we did. Our exercise or our activities uh, bring us to who, who we are today. And we are also what happened to us. Some of us have gone through tough times. Some of us have gone through maybe even accidents. And that affects us physically. And that is the fact. So the past definitely have a lot of impact on us, even physically. And number two is that the past affects us emotionally. And in fact, that aspect is even more serious, I would say, even stronger than physically. It is something that you may not see on the, on the, on the surface, but a person can be affected emotionally very badly. And that is an emotional damage, like what you have probably heard. Emotionally damaged. <laughs> the emotional damage is very real in people's life. It could be something that happened to you, maybe a trauma when you were young, or maybe you were abused when you were small. Now all that had a very negative impact to you from the past. And some of us are very confident. Some of us are lack of confidence. And all that has to do with how we have been brought up. Our character, our outlook of life, all that is a result of the past. So we cannot say that the past has nothing uh, to do with us now. It has everything to do with us. And spiritually, of course, um, maybe because some of us in the past have been uh, dedicated to you know, a certain goddess or deity, now that has a very big impact on us spiritually. 
So that is what we understand. But what does the Bible say? Uh, that is our authority, right? Always. So let's take a look at what the Bible says about past. Uh, this is the verse that I read just now. Before Abraham was, I am. That's Jesus talking. Now, what this implies is that God was there in our past. Not only in Abraham's past, but in everyone's past. He was there. And remember, oh, this is different from what I have. <laughs> I might have sent you a wrong version. I don't know. But anyway, um, I, brought you, I brought your ancestors out of Egypt. God remind, this, remind the people of Israel and even us now, uh, throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, you see this again and again. God reminding His people that He brought our ancestors, or rather Israel, out of Egypt by His mighty hand. Now that tells us that God is aware of the past and he wants us to know the past and he wants us to know our root, right? When Nathanael was introduced to Jesus, this is what he told him. He told, he told Nathanael, I saw you under the fig tree. Remember the story? After Jesus said that, Nathanael said, you must be God. Now, what I understood of this verse is that Jesus was not saying that he passed by the fig tree and he saw Nathanael. I don't think that was the case. If that was the case, then Nathaniel wouldn't be so surprised and so impressed. Nathaniel was probably by himself and at a place where no one would have known. But Jesus said, I saw you under your victory. Now that, could be, that happened to Nathaniel, but I think that could also happen to all of us. I saw you when you were driving. I saw you when you were crying. And God also said to Jeremiah, and which I believe also, also apply to all of us, is that before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Now look at this carefully. Yeah. It's not when you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. It's before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. So we came from God, and He knew us, even from the very beginning. And in Revelation, I think we see this again and again in His, in his message to the seven churches. I know your deeds. I know this, I know that. I know what, your strength, I know your weakness. So God, God definitely knew our past. And the scriptures also tell us that He was there. And He saw us, He heard us, He knew what happened. He knew your heart. He knew why you did certain things. So how does that mean to us? In, in, um, concerning our past, some of us probably feel that we are so sinful, that our life is such a mess that no one could forgive us. Even ourselves cannot forgive ourselves. So we probably have an impression that, um, have an idea that maybe even God cannot forgive me, you know. <laughs> yeah. But this is not what the scripture says. This is what the scripture says, it's actually. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So it really doesn't matter what, it has, what had happened to you in the past. You may feel that God could never forgive you, but He did. He did. He sent His precious Son, and the one and only, to die for you. And that's how much He loved you. So to say that God, even God could not forgive my sin, is actually a mockery to God, you know? <laughs> He's actually mocking what God had done, that what Jesus had done on the cross. And the devil is very happy about it. But the devil is very happy that we, you, don't, you don't think God can forgive you. So believe it, believe it, and move on. Now, some of us may be very hurtful. Like, like what some of us say, uh, have, you have a lot, of, you know, a lot of bullet holes, <laughs> a lot of wounds that come from the past. And that, a lot of these are emotional hurts. That's what he said, hurt people, hurt people. If you, if you have been hurt before, you are likely to hurt others. And that is emotional, emotional wounds. Again, I would like to say that God knew. God knows. He was there. He knew what happened. And, and you, may ask, you may ask a question. So if He knew, how come He didn't intervene? Uh, I don't have an answer to that. But I have a lot of, of, uh, of examples in the Bible as well. Remember Stephen was stoned to death? He didn't intervene. 
Remember the disciples were persecuted? He didn't intervene. Remember Dina was uh, raped? He didn't intervene. Remember the remember the 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 the, the conquest of Israel by the by Assyrian and Babylonians? He didn't intervene. Yeah? People were killed, women were raped, children were dashed to the rock. Now, when I say God knows, it doesn't mean that God will always intervene. He has his reason. But, but there are a few things that I think will be helpful for us to know as well. And the, the thing is that his word says the truth will set us free. And the truth is this. The truth is you are a new, a new creation. And you have a new beginning. The truth is also that you are a child of God. That's what he has, he has, he has sent Jesus to the cross to brought us to. And the truth is you are precious to his sight in his sight. So, so with that, uh, I hope it will be helpful to us to move on, that you have, that you know the truth. And second thing that will also be helpful to us, I think personally, is this, that you have the support of the community of the church, of believers. Um, remember the parable that Jesus gave? Jesus talked about the, 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 the seed, the parable of the seed. I may be taking this a little bit out of context, but I think it is applicable too, that the seed will grow in the ground uh, that, that is fertile. And, and that, that ground, even though the parable I know is, is talking about our hearts, right? I think it, also, it can also be applied to a, to a community where you, where you live in. When, when you help someone to become a believer, don't leave him alone and, and in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a fellowship of people who may help him to fall. <laughs> Uh, but let's let's embrace the person into the community of believers, so that so that you so that you are in a fertile soil, then you will grow and uh, and bear fruit. So I think if if you are emotionally hurt, hurt uh, you can probably do, do these few things. Number one is to open up yourself, um, acknowledge it, let somebody else let somebody know what you've gone through. Uh, say, I am wounded. Uh, hello, I am wounded. Hello, wounded. I am Bruce. Bruce Lee. B R U I S E D. <laughs> Never mind, you don't get it. <laughs> uh, open up yourself. Number two is hold on to the truth. Hold on to the truth that the Bible says you are a new creation. And number three is to embrace the support of the believers. Remember Joseph? Something happened to Joseph. He was sold to Egypt. But God could turn around something bad that happened to you into something good, right? Or maybe you are one of those who feel lonely or regretful. I think I've got the wrong slides here, but <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Let's just move on. Uh, the word I have here is actually regretful. You always have this thing in your mind that only if only if I didn't do this, or in, only if I have chosen this, then my life would have been different. Now, that is a life that is full of regrets. I think we shouldn't stay there. What, what we have learned in the past, let it be a lesson. But let us move on to the future. Don't let it hold us back. Yeah? Don't stay regretful. So that is the past. Now, let us look at the future. One thing definitely about the future is it will come. <laughs> the next second come, it keeps coming, yeah, and we keep growing all. <laughs> Those who are very energetic now and who are very young, uh, be assured that you will grow all. <laughs> we, we were in a park recently with my niece, my brothers. Uh, I have a niece who is about nine years old. He, she, she, came, she came to us and said, uh, Uncle Leslie, Uncle Leslie, can I run? <laughs> because we were walking, right? I said, sure, you go run, run around and catch, catch, catch us up from behind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But then I don't want to run alone. Can someone run with me? <laughs> so it didn't happen <laughs> because, because no one would run with her. <laughs> so people, are, people who, are, who are young are energetic. And actually, we were young before too. <laughs> if you look at all the elders, you, you probably thought that we never were, were young before, right? But we were. <laughs> And we were, we were good-looking before, too. <laughs> the, 
the, the thing for sure about the future is that it is unavoidable. It will, it will eventually happen. Who knows one day we'll, I'll be on a wheelchair and we'll be walking very slowly and that could happen. It is unavoidable. Um, I live in a place called Mission Road in Cebu. That's, that's where I, 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 uh, my, my, I grew up in. Mission Road has a lot of coffin shops. Not coffee shop, uh, coffin, coffin shops. <laughs> uh, so when we were playing ping pong last time, uh, when we were small, well, we live on the fourth floor. So if the ping pong ball dropped down to the ground floor, nobody want to go and pick it up. <laughs> it's a coffin shop at the bottom. <laughs> so anyway, those coffin shops, some of them are still around. And I always, always when I walk past them, I always thought to myself, I don't know when I will have to come in to, to pick a coffin. And, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Uh, so, so I did. I have to choose that. Choose one last year. Mm. So anyway, for future, some of us look, to, look forward to future. We have a very bright future. For example, a wedding may be coming. Or a conversation may be coming for you. So congratulations. And, but, but there are some of us who are not sure what is going to happen in the future. These are people who are probably prisoners of war. And we know there are wars going on right now. They are not even sure what's going on, uh, what's going to happen tomorrow. Will I be executed or will I be released? So that's future. And I know some, who, some people who wake up and wonder what is going to happen next. I know an uncle um, many years ago, he has passed on since, since then. By one time, um, when, his, when his wife passed away, that's what he told us. He said, when I woke up, opened my eyes, I was wondering, why am I still here? <laughs> and, and that is future for some, for some of us. And that's very real. Now let's take a look at what the Bible says about future. God told Abraham, about his descendants. Remember, remember God told Abraham that your descendants will be slaves in, Israel, in, in Egypt for 400 years and all that. And, and that 400 years only happened many, many years after he told Abraham, even 100 years. So God knows. God knows the future, my point is. And secondly, you know about how God predicted Josiah's destruction of idols as well? Uh, that... That prophecy came in First King chapter thirteen, when, when God sent a, a, a prophet to Jeroboam, the king of Israel at the time. See, the, see Jeroboam built altar in Dan and Bethel. He he built he built golden calves. Remember, we went through this before, um, and asked people to worship the golden calves. So God was very angry with that. So he sent a prophet to tell him that this is going to be destroyed. Destroy. A king will come one day. He even named him. I don't know whether this was recorded later and therefore the name was there or God actually named him right there hundreds of years before it happened. And the name was Josiah. And it happened in Second King. Second King, as you know, in history, is after many, 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 many kings already, after hundreds of years. And it happened, Josiah came and destroyed the altars that Jeroboam built. So God knew the future and God knows the future. And of course, there are many other prophets and prophecies in the Bible. We know that they, they come through. And, and Jesus himself talked a lot about future and predicts a lot of, about future. He talks about his own resurrection. I mean, you can't, it's not something that you can control, right? That somebody killed me and then I resurrected. Uh, but this happened. So, so, so whatever God said will happen. He talked about judgment and rewards as well. And he talked about his second coming. He also talked about new heaven and new Jerusalem and also God dwelling among men. So all these are things that God talk about future. Now what it means is that he gives us a lot of hope. Now for, back, back to ourselves. Are we, again I'm trying to address ourselves here huh, as individuals. Some of us may be worried about future, maybe, maybe worried about aging. So you try to keep yourself young. Uh, that's a good thing, yeah. That's a good thing. <laughs> but we really need to need to age gracefully, yeah. We need to accept 
and adapt to environment. Uh, it will be very difficult if you if you try to stay, try to try to remain where you where you used to be, and you know the 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 mirror tells you that that's not the case. Okay, <laughs> so it's it's kind of difficult. Yeah, I remember I remember I told you before I used to jump up the stage, but now I can't. I just have to accept it. I can't do it anymore. Right, aging takes a toll. Now, however, a good news is that Bible tells us about a new body. That God will eventually give us a new body, all of us, believers. And that new body will be incorruptible. You will never get sick. You will never get all. You will always remain beautiful, handsome, <laughs> and, and energetic. And some of us may be anxious about the future. Not enough money to pay the rent, to pay the school fees. Or maybe you are physically unwell like I said, and therefore you may not know what's going to happen. Uh, is, is, will there be anyone looking after me? Or maybe you're worried about your exam T tomorrow coming up. <laughs> what's going to happen? So you're anxious. Now this is what the Bible tells us. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fail, will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid, you are worthy more than many sparrows. So the sparrows that cost only a penny, uh, even the, the, father, the Father in heaven also cares about them, not to mention you and I. That's what he's saying. I think it's, it's also important to remember that Jesus also said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Or rather, that's what God said. Um, and but Jesus also said similar thing. He said, "He said I will be with you always, and that's to comfort on about the the future and not to be anxious, but to hang on to God." Right? And some of us may be at the point of decisions um, in your future coming up. You have a lot of decisions to make, so that that worries you a bit. I think the Bible tells us this. This is, the, this is to address the issue. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your paths straight. That's Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. And Proverbs 16 says the same thing, I think. I don't have it here. Uh, commit your, your plan to the Lord. Yeah? So that is the past, the future. And let's, we have look at the past and we have look at the future. Now let's look at the present. Now let me show you these slides here. The, the three sliders here, the first one has very little uh, on, on the, on the, in the past, right? And the one in the middle has more of the past. Now I, I've colored them blue and red. What I'm trying to, to illustrate here is the, the blue parts represent happy past. <laughs> A good memory. The red ones are probably bad memory. The the so not so positive past. So some of us have more blue. Some of us have more red. Now that depends on how we live our past, our 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 present, and therefore our present will become the past, right? So to have a to have a positive past, to have more blue, you should try to do as as much mem memorable things. Uh, they, will, they, will be, they will help others and help yourself. Um, like what Peter Pan said. You know Peter Pan, right? The, the guy who flies. <laughs> he, he, he says happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. When you think happy thoughts, then he can fly. <laughs> now happy thoughts are things, are good, memory, good um, memories. Uh, happy memories that you, that you accumulate over years. So we should try to do that as well. Collect happy thoughts. And you will make you cry. And you will make you fly. Screw not cry. Sorry. <laughs> so how do you co collect happy thoughts? Do something together with your loved ones. Do do as as, as much as possible. Ha have a happy time together. Go out things, uh, and take photos. This is something that I'm I'm very bad at. My sister is very good at it. She takes a lot of photos and maybe too many photos. <laughs> That's her. But me, sometimes I often forget to take photos. <laughs> so, like my mom visited me recently, and uh, after she left, and I realized oh, I didn't even take any photo. <laughs> uh, That's very bad. I should have taken some photos. And that, those are those are memories. Those are happy thoughts, right? 
And perhaps that's why, that's why the Bible tells us as well, do not let the sun go down when you are angry. If you let the sun go down when you are angry, you have collected negative thoughts. You have collected your negative past. You have more red in the past. So let's not do that. Let's reconcile and, and make sure our past is blue, right? Now, what does the Bible say about the present? The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The day that the Lord has made begins with T in the week. You know what is the day we begin with T in the week? It's not Tuesday. It's not Thursday. It's not even thank God it's Friday. <laughs> it is today. It is today. And, this, and today, the, the Bible says, let us rejoice and be glad in it because the, the Lord has made it. Now, the, the Bible also says, be, encourage one another daily as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. So, with regard to the body of Christ, with regard to one another, another let us encourage one another as long as it's called today. To the Romans, Paul said this, For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. So whether we live or die, whether it is today or yesterday or tomorrow, or like some people say, it's today or tomorrow day or every day, every day, <laughs> uh, let's leave it to the Lord. And give us, remember that one of the lines in the prayer is give us this day our daily bread. What he's saying is that we should rely on God, depend on Him every day. Give us today our daily bread. Last one. Um, today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. Um, again, this is, this is another verse that tells us to always be repentant. Always be repentant. If you know you're wrong, repent. Um, and do that today. Don't wait till tomorrow day. And James says this, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet, you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears in a little time and then vanishes. Isn't that like what Moses' prayer said as well? Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. What James says is, whatever it is that, we, that you have in your plan, remember to commit it to the Lord. Yeah? Because your life is in His hand. So, with regard to present, I think there are these three things that I want to share with you. Uh, if you can't remember anything else, at least remember, remember these three things. Yeah? <laughs> Number one, with regard to today, this is how I think we should live. Uh, remember that you are responsible. You are responsible for yourselves. So don't, 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 don't keep, don't keep uh, blaming someone else. Remember I, I said that we carry our past with us and some of us carry very negative past like our, the, the abuses or the bullies that had happened to you or something bad that happened to you or an accident. Now, you cannot keep carrying it with you. You have to let it go. You have to, you have to forgive and move on. And don't, and, 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 and don't keep blaming what other people have done to you. They have moved on. And the devil will be, will, will be very happy that you keep blaming them and, and keep staying where you are. But rather, God wants you to move on. So let's, let's forgive and let's, let's not blame others, but take on that responsibility of our own life. Right? And, and then move on. Because it is actually our own decision whether you feel happy or not today, or whether you feel defeated, or, or encouraged, or discouraged. That really is in your own hand. So we need to take up that responsibility for ourselves. And secondly, is remember that you are influential. You don't have to be an influencer. To be influential. You know influencers, right? Influencers are people who, who influence others on social media. 
I think some of us are probably influencers here. <laughs> uh, you, you are actually in, an influential, an, in, an influencer, <laughs> naturally, because people actually observe us. Whatever you do, you are observed, and, you, and that has an impact on, on other people, whether it's positive or negative. Perhaps that's why Paul told us, uh, or told the Corinthians, not to stumble others, remember? Even though you know something is right, but you refrain from doing it when you know that you will stumble somebody else because you are an influencer. Yeah? So remember, number one, you are responsible, and number two, you are an influencer. And number three, remember that you are love, and you are able to love. Remember the verses we have already looked at just now? That God knew you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. And God saw you under that fig tree. Yeah? Um, and He loves you. And one thing that happened in the past, we have looked at the past and the future and present, right? One thing that had happened in the past is God sent Jesus to die for us. So He loves us. He loves you. And because He loves us, we can love others. That's what the scripture says. Uh, this is what John said in his first letter. Dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. I think I have another verse. And also John said we love because he first loved us. So there's two things in this verse here. One is remember that He loves us. And number two is remember that you can therefore love others because you, have been, you are being loved by God. And that is our ability to love. And love here is really the word agape. And it's not that fussy, fussy kind of love. It's not the, the emotional kind of love. It's also not the brotherly kind of love where you have a, a natural kinship with another person and therefore you love. Um, but rather, an agape kind of love is the love of the will. Um, whether you're beautiful or not, <laughs> whether I like you or not, <laughs> whether you are my brother or sister or not in my family, I choose to love you. That's what agape is. And we, and we can do that because God loves us. And therefore, we love because He first loved us. Now, come back to the time slider. So we have looked at the past, the future, and the present. The past, the history uh, that's recorded in the Bible, uh, you, you realize that God did not hide any, any things under the carpet. In, in, in the entire history of the, of the, of the Old Testament and, and whatever happened in Acts as well, in the New Testament, God did not hide away those things that are ugly quote-unquote ugly. David sinned, Solomon sinned, right? a lot of people sinned, a lot of mistakes were made, but God never hid them. And we can, we can read all about this, and this, this, this is our God. And He chose not to just give us the, uh, you should do this and you should not do this, as a, as a manual to live our lives. But He chose to tell us stories, tell us history rather, and, and to, 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 to understand Him better, so He can relate to us. And I think, I feel that if we look at the back, if we look back at the, at the past, um, what the Bible tries to, tries to help us is to strengthen our faith. By looking at the, at the history, our faith will be strengthened. And that's what it's all about. And we should also collect in our own, in our own lives the, our history and look back at it and, and, and be encouraged. And that's what, it's, that's what the past is. Right? It, it strengthens our faith. It's meant to be that way. And the future, the future is supposed to give us the hope. And that's why Jesus tells us about the, he, he has gone to prepare rooms for us. That's why He told us about rewards. That's why He told us about His second coming, that our future may be full of hope, that we, we do not be dismayed. Uh, even though our lives may, be, may seem to us be very long and may be full of suffering and whatever, but that's why His words tell us it's really just a split second to Him. And, and He will come soon. And present, as I have already said, uh, explained just now, is about is is to remember that you are loved, 
and you are able to love therefore. And this is how Paul summarizes it in First Corinthians. For those of you who do not like number, you probably don't like this verse. It's 13. <laughs> yeah. And this is how Paul said it. Oops. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. I know this is the beginning of the year, 2024, and we have just passed 2023. Uh, sorry. Oh, yeah, correct. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, it, but, but really, it's not about the number. Whether it's, whether it's 2023, whether we are embracing 2024 or 2034, for that matter, or it could be 2025. Uh, is it January or is it another month already in the, in, the, in the middle of the year? A year passed by so quickly, right? So the number really is not important. Uh, though from what we have seen in the scriptures just now, is that God wants us to focus on today. Today. Rejoice. So long it's called today. Encourage one another. So long it's called today. And he said today, rely on him. Give us our daily bread. And be repentant, ready to repent today. Not any other day. Not yesterday. Not tomorrow. Yesterday is past. But never mind. Move on. Tomorrow is coming. So hang on. <laughs> but today... Let this be the day where you make the best of it. Yeah? Um, remember that you are responsible. Remember that you are influential. And remember that you are loved and you are able to love. Let's, shall we, shall we stand and let's close in prayer. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you that you have brought us up, brought us to today. Um, no matter what our past has been, and you were there, and you knew it, and you have forgiven us. And we thank you that you have shown us the future as well, that we can have something to look forward to, that we have hope in the future because of what you have done, and because of the second coming of Jesus as well. And we thank you that we can, we can just focus on today, and we don't have to worry about too much about future, because you say that there's no need to, to worry, because you are looking after us. We want to commit our today into your hands. Whatever our plan, whatever that, 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 is, that is in our hearts, Lord, guide us and lead us. And may we bring glory and may we bring honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.